welcome back in this uh, lecture and this will be the my last lecture for this course i will briefly talk about polymer blends and then have some concluding remarks about the polymer science when you discuss polymer blends it's basically a mixture of two or more polymers which could be homo polymers as well as co polymers so polymer blend blends are the mixture of at least two polymers which could be homo polymers or co polymers as well now when these polymers get mixed in a homogeneous level or homogeneous at molecular level we call this as miscible polymer blend and that happens when the gibbs free energy of mixing is less than 0 or negative and when this gibbs free energy of mixing is positive then this polymer blend actually form a immiscible polymer blend where the different polymers form different separated phases and sometimes this immiscible polymer blends are which actually have diff present in different phases they can be kind of tied to each other so that they don't get separated further by using some compatibilizer and which creates compatibilized polymer blends miscible blend have averaging of properties between two materials for example we are using two different tg the polymers having two different tg then it will raise the tg of the lower component or it will raise the strength or toughness of a cheap polymer so sometimes miscible blends are are created or to increase the strength or tg or the toughness of a cheap polymer by adding some other polymer and immiscible blends are a composite structure and properties are a synergistically greater than those of constituent materials sometimes deliberately immiscible blends or compatibilized blends are created so that the property or the performance of these blends is better than individual constituents now when we talk about thermodynamics of uh, polymer blend if we talk about delta g mix we know delta h mix minus t delta s mix now for a given temperature and pressure as we discussed in our lectures on polymer solution this is combinatorial combinatorial entropy which comes because of the change in conformation of the polymer molecules now when you mix two different small molecules so you are using molecules of different color invariably the entropy is mixing is positive because there are many combinations possible i think i discussed this during derivation of flory hagen's equation so when we mix small molecules invariably delta s mixture is much higher than zero so that is why unless there is a repulsion repulsive interaction between the molecules mixing is always favorable for small molecule but when you use large polymer molecules like this and we use uh, some other color so if you use two different polymer because the polymers are large in size the gain the value of this entropy or combinatorial entropy of mixing is low they 
either very close to 0 or uh, they are positive, but the value is they are you know, but the value is very low. So, the polymer polymer miscibility is mainly determine the value of del H. If del H is del H mixing is negative, then miscibility is favorable, is del H m is close to 0, then it is uh, either miscible or immiscible depending upon the value of uh, delta S m which depends on the molecular weight as well. The higher is the molecular weight, the miscibility comes down because the, the value of delta J S m becomes close to 0. Lower molecular to probably will be uh, better miscible. So, uh, if we have delta m positive, then obviously they are not miscible. So, to have po two polymer to miscible to become miscible with each other, we should have delta h m delta h mixing less than 0, which happens if there is strong inter polymer interaction attractive interaction between those two polymer chain and that happens if we have like hydrogen bonding between polymer chains ionic interactions or in electron donor acceptor complex formation between polymer chains. If these things happen then there is strong interaction between attractive interaction between polymer chains and that helps uh, the value of del H becomes negative as a result delta G becomes negative and the polymers become miscible with each other. Now, why should we blend? We discussed a uh, little bit in the uh, first slide because it improves the base polymer, especially it, if the base polymer is a cheap polymer, then we can add some other polymers to improve the performance of the base polymer and it actually helps in developing broad range of property. For, from, from same two polymer, we can mix in different ratios to make different grades and, and basically have a different products. Obviously, if we using two polymers of different cost, the blend cost will also vary. But if the require uh, the 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 final application does not require very high uh, um, property, then we can use probably a cheaper uh, polymer, the blend with a higher cheaper polymer component, and use that. So basically, we can actually use the blends to develop a range of um, material and uh, dilute the cost of engineering. Uh, resin or low cost uh, with low cost polymer and it can help in recycling the municipal waste or plastic waste. The methods of blendings can be either mechanical mixing which is the cheapest uh, um, way of mixing or blending polymers. It can be done by dissolving the polymers in a common solvent and then casting a film or by freeze drying or spray drying, but this is a most costly affair especially uh, use of solvent is also hazardous. And we can use a um, kind of polymerization technique where the other polymer can be used as a solvent and we can polymerize the other monomer in presence of that polymer. So, it gives kind of a interpenetrating network, but it is not a it is not a true sense a blending process because we are not mixing two monomer two polymers. And this is a possible phase diagram, not necessarily each polymer pair will have all this uh, all this um, all this LCST and different uh, region. This is the total uh, possible scenario which captured in this uh, uh, phase diagram and this value corresponds to lower critical solution temperatures which means below this temperature the 
to polymers become miscible and above this temperature depending upon the composition it can remain either in a miscible or in immiscible phase and within this immiscible phase we can have a metastable region and a completely phase separated two region. Similarly, we can have another scenario where above a certain temperature the polymers become miscible or they have a single phase and this particular temperature is called upper critical solution temperature or UCST below which depending upon the composition we either we can have a single phase or a two phase um, scenario. Some example of miscible blend with weak interactions like blend of polyphenol oxide and polystyrene uh, commercially it is sold by in the name of Noril and the other examples are like PMA, PMMA, PEO, PBO, PBA, PO, PS, PBME. These are the example of miscible blend having weak interactions. Other examples of miscible blend like PMA and PBF, in this case PBF which is a costlier uh, polymer which is blended into PMA to make the UV resistant of PMA higher. So, in this case small amount of PBA, PBF is added to PMA so that the UV resistant of PMA becomes higher. Now, as we described earlier in this slide is basically repeating from my earlier lectures where for a blend the Tg is given by how these blends from their miscible property. If they are miscible there is average single Tg which is given by these expressions and this is the most uh, accurate uh, uh, equation by which we can which can be used and this is Fox equation as I have mentioned earlier where this TGA and TGB are the Tg for polymer A and polymer B respectively. If they are immiscible then we get 2 Tgs for individual homopolymers and they are partially miscible we still get 2 Tgs, but the Tgs in this uh, blend is different as I discussed earlier. Now, we can use this immiscibility to our advantages for example, polystyrene is a brittle polymer. Now, to improve the impact behavior or ductility of polystyrene this rubber polybutadiene rubber is added. Now, poly, now if, if they were completely miscible then we have to have a single phase and the impact property of polystyrene would have increases marginally because of presence of polybutadiene, but because they are immiscible we can have polybutadiene added in the polystyrene matrix and as a result this polybutadiene will phase separate and remain as a this type of phase separated and we can use some compatibilizer to compatibilize this or we can basically have a covalent bonding between this phase with the poly polystyrene matrix as a result this will this polybutadiene phase will act as a impact modifier and as a result this blend of polystyrene and polybutadiene is an example of high impact polystyrene. It is best if we have this polymers polystyrene is connected covalently with polybutadiene as a block copolymer and that is generally done we made a rubber core polybutadiene core and from that core polystyrene we basically make a uh, polybutadiene core and there will be double bonds and from that core polystyrene are generated to make a core cell type polymers and which will have high impact. And you can if we do a DMA of this uh, polystyrene polybutadiene sample we can see that this is a Tg corresponds to the polybutadiene phase 
and this is T g corresponds to polystyrene phase and this is tan delta. So, you can see there is a maximum here corresponds to the T g of polybutyrene and there is a maximum around 100 degree little over 100 degree which corresponds to the maxima uh, corresponds to the T g of polystyrene molecule. So, we are plotting g in this case and this is g prime and this is tan delta. So, this is corresponds to T g of, of P s and this corresponds to T g of P b polybutyrene. This is tan delta. So, we can we now see that there is always a useful there is a reason why we want to make either miscible blend or a immiscible blend. It is not that always it is better to prepare a miscible blend, we sometimes immiscible blend like the example shown here also improve the property of the base polymer. Okay, we'll, with this I will have some concluding remark about the polymer science and if we go back and remember this slide I have shown few times. This is the complete picture of life stages and transformation reactions starting from the source of the polymer monomers and polymer and then polymerization and then product. So, this is the part I have discussed during last uh, all the lectures. The only part we have not discussed is about the source of the raw material and the waste management and in fact, these are probably very important not it is probably as important as this part as well. Now, there is and was a concern about the raw material most of the synthetic polymers are synthesized from monomers which are derived from petroleum resources basically oil crude oil. Now, that that concern is is basically reducing with day by day because of uh, evolution of electric cars and electric vehicles they which basically consume the petroleum products like oil most because there is a demand of oil is slowing in that aspect. So, the concern of supply of monomers from those crude are actually coming down. In fact, I was told by a one great scientist that in fact, there are enough reserve of oil to be supplied for many, 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 many centuries um, to, to synthesize uh, synthetic polymers. So, this part is probably is not that concerning now rather than it is more it is mostly important to think about what to do with this polymer materials and most of the bad name of polymer materials are because of this bad management of the polymer waste. So, if we can actually do a most proper waste management then the bad name of polymers are actually uh, will not be there. So, if we go back and look at again polymer actually gives you the final product using these steps and then after the application waste are generated and this is a very important how do we manage the resulting waste and we should be either reusing this material or we should be recycling that is the most important. So, if we look at the polymer waste management the most problematic aspect comes when use of long lasting polymers for short lip applications like packaging, um, carry bag and bottles where this is a short 
lasting application we eat we drink water from a bottle and throw it basically the application duration is very small but the the, the life of the polymer is very large so they are actually is main problem and most of the today's synthetic polymers are produced from petroleum petrochemicals and not biodegradable so these persistent polymers are a significant source of environmental pollution and they harm actually wildlife when they are disposed in nature like in sea water we always see bad picture of plastic bags and plastic bottles are lying on the sea beach and are floating on the sea water and so on which is harmful for wildlife or sea life aquatic life as well and plastics after use are often soiled by food and other biological substances as a result making physical recycling of these materials are kind of impractical and generally undesirable so if we use a bottle and uh, for storing a juice or some other thing and then these bottles or these packets they actually gets contaminated with the food or the substances which is which are used which are used for uh, which came in contact with this material as a result physical recycling is very difficult so what we generally is done with the waste there are mainly two types of waste when what is the majority uh, you know are collected waste they are collected from waste bins and and then either recycled or they are incinerated and used as a energy source or they can be composed using microbiops to further use as a, a monomer resource back to polymer industry or as a fertilizer or if none of this can be possible then they can be uh, basically put in a landfill so that the degradation uh, so that they can be less harmful to the environment the most problematic comes is the non collected waste like those um, those plastics uh, carry bags or bottles which are throw thrown away in some parts where these are not collected those we those are the pictures we see from you know different uh, sources so if we can reduce this non collected waste and that can be only done if all of us all of us who are using plastics we can actually dispose the plastics in proper way so that when a a person collectivity is, is done the, this plastics waste can be collected and either of these four processes can be applied to this waste so that the pollution or hazard is minimized for this non collected waste it is actually better if we can use biodegradable plastics or biodegradable polymer then even if you don't collect this material probably it will not do as much as harm if the polymers were not biodegradable now after collecting the polymer waste for recycling or other other process to happen with this collect, collected waste need to be washed and if they are used for recycling then it has to be grinded and reprocessed for making further product which is also cost effective you know costly affair as a result uh, there is always a economic challenge of polymer recycling unless we can um, use a, find a high uh, cost uh, application then it becomes always challenging and as it, because these polymers they are not base polymers they are not only 100% pure water as i discuss they will have additives they will have fillers and in the result they cannot be used for the applications original application like if one plastics or polymer were used for a water bottle then that cannot be recycled back again for making a water bottle because 
it presence of its additives and other contaminants. Hence, this recycled plastics are generally used for low end applications, uh, non food or non health related applications and generally when you see a black polymers like this black bean dust bean bags, these are generally are synthesized from recycled plastics. So, zero landfilling, landfilling is the needed uh, to achieve circular economy of pl pl plastic. So, if we whatever we can collect, uh, collect the plastics from waste, they can either be recycled back to the system, which will be only possible we have a zero landfill and zero non collected waste, then we can have a circular economy for plastics. So, replacements of biodegradable polymers is needed particularly for packaging applications, trash bag wrapping, loose fill form, food containers, film wrapping and other places. So, we should discuss about biodegradability and compostability. Now, biodegradable polymers are capable of undergoing decomposition by enzymatic action of microbes or microorganisms like bacteria, fungi and algae. Now, these biodegradable polymers often are derived from plant processing of atmospheric oxygen. So, plants actually process the as basically they collect the CO2 and from which the biodegradable polymers are actually synthesized. Biodegradation is the process which convert back these biodegradable polymers to carbon dioxide, CH4, water, biomass, humic matter and other natural substances. Thus, biodegradable polymers are naturally cyclic, cycled by biological processes. These polymer chains may also be broken down by non enzymatic processes such as chemical hydrolysis, but these are not very commonly encountered by normal plastics because if they are anyway get hydrolyzed uh, in, in, in presence of some chemicals or some uh, non enzymatic process, then their usefulness also will come down because during use also it will become uh, it will hydrolyze and become the property I will degrade. Sometimes these biodegradable terms are replaced with bioabsorbable or bioerodible or bioreabsorbable materials, they are have these all these have similar meaning. Compostability is a mat material biodegradability using compost medium. Depending on the standard use like ASTM standard or European standards, different composting conditions like humidity, temperature, cycle must be determined or it must be used to determine the compostability level. So, to finding out the compostability of a polymer sample, there has to be uh, you know some standard conditions to be applied which is given by the regulatory agencies. And we also must take care about the amount of mineralization happen and what is the nature of these residues after biodegradation. Generally the polymers which have hydrophobic character or have a high molecular weight and higher crystallinity they actually degrade to a lower extent because you know during compostability water is uh, is a factor what if the polymers do not come in contact with water then obviously compostability or degradability becomes lower and lower sometimes these terms like biopolymers, bioplastics, biodegradable plastics are used synonymously in certain contexts, but each has unique meaning. 
For example, biopolymers are the polymers synthesized by living organisms. They can be polynucleotides like DNA, RNA or polypeptides, proteins or polysaccharides, polymeric carbohydrates. A bioplastics can be defined as a polymer that is manufactured into commercial product from natural source or renewable sources. So, there is a little different between biopolymers and bioplastics. A bioplastics can be biodegradable, but a biodegradable plastics does not mean the material was derived fully or in part from biological sources. For example, polymers such as polycaprolactone or polybutylene succinate, they are partially biodegradable, but they are not sourced from a natural source or biodegradable sources. They are synthesized from petroleum products. So, this gives a cyclic process of related to biodegradable polymers and the basically plant take with the help of water, sunlight and carbon dioxide they produce raw material for bio biodegradable polymers. For example, they produce a starch cellulose pectin they can directly be used as a biodegradable polymers for mating products. They also makes building blocks for making biodegradable polymers like sugars and lipid. So, which can be polymerized to make biodegradable polymers. They gives these sugars and lipids which can be actually using biotechnology skull root like using microbes. They can convert these raw materials to polymers like polymer poly, uh, polyhydroxy acrylates, pool and xanthan. So, using microbes they can be directly converted to biodegradable polymers or they can be fermented to some monomeric products like lactic acid, aspartic acid which can be used as monomer for making biodegradable polymers like polyacrylic acid or thermal polyaspartate and so on. So, there are four different ways we can synthesize biodegradable polymers, but the source is has to be from plant. They can uh, directly produce like biodegradable polymer, they can produce monomers which can be converted to biodegradable polymers they can produce monomer which can be converted to biodegradable polymers using microbes or they can be converted to other monomers by fermentation process which can be again polymerized to produce biodegradable polymers. Once the polymers are produced they can be used to make different products and on after using those product they can be recycled back and by composting we can get back this raw material which can be again either be used for the fertilizer or uh, for the agriculture applications. So, this is gives you a cyclic picture for biodegradable polymers. These are the four types of biodegradable polymers we described and there is a names for correspondence to that. You can look at this chart in detail. In addition to the four biodegradable polymers which we discussed in the last slides, there is some synthetic polymers like polycarprolactone, polyester amides, especially aliphatic polyesters, they are also either partly or fully biocompert biodegradable. So, in effect we talked about four different types of biodegradable possible in last slide and we can also have few synthetic polymers which are biodegradable. These are some of the chemical structures of biodegradable polymers cellulose, amylose, carboxymethyl cellulose polyhydroxybutyrate, polylactic acid, thermal polyaspartate. These are some synthetic polymers like polycaprolactone, polybutyrate, succinate. They are either partly or fully biodegradable. 
let me conclude by giving you some directions about or some um, idea about Indian plastics industry very briefly. And these are the main companies in India which produces plastics uh, starting from Reliance Industries and Indian Oil uh, Corporation of their petrochemicals and the products are listed here the different type and then their amount and the percentage of share also as mentioned in this. So, this is just to give you uh, the companies which basically makes polymer in our country. And there is a steady growth as our GDP grows uh, steadily with time the growth of polymers also increasing steadily as time. So, GDP growth has a strong relation with uh, plastic growth. The situation of plastic recycling and recovery in India is not very bleak. In fact, almost 100 percent of rigid plastic waste are recycled and 90 for example, 95 percent plus PET bottles are bottles are um, bottle waste are recycled. And uh, so, basically uh, the regulatory agencies are trying their best and in fact, the situation is not that bad you know only the single use plastics are this uh, like packaging materials which causes uh, most concern. So, if we as a consumer take some responsibility to uh, discard those uh, packaging materials in a proper way then the um, problem of plastics will not come. So, in summary uh, huge growth opportunities in India for plastics due to low uh, per capita consumption compared to other developed countries in world. Flexible packaging industry poised for strong growth and insulated from current economic scenario due to huge and diverse weight consumer base. And planned infrastructure projects are driving growth in India and these are ably supported by current and upcoming domestic capacities. Now, I will give a concluding side that in as a polymer scientist or a polymer chemist we should not be you know having any doubt about the future of polymers or plastics. For example, look at this situation, situation now the pandemic situation and all these PPEs which have been used by doctors and nurses or among us you know look at what this all these are made by made from polymers. You know we are talking about the medical equipment, medical disposable uh, disposable disposables like syringes and gloves and all these things they are all made by polymers. So, unless we basically um, have polymers it is not possible. So, although polymers have um, kind of bad name because of their environmental hazards, but as I said once more earlier also I am saying once more this is responsibility for the consumers like us to discard the polymers or plastic materials what we using properly. If we discard properly then we will be able to solve this problem of plastics waste. With this uh, let me conclude and uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, course of introduction to polymer science. In case you have any question you are free to ask me uh, over phone or you can send me an email from uh, my email address is available from my web page and I will be glad to answer your question as much as possible for me. Good luck. Thank you again for listening to all these lectures.